So I got this Twitter notification from this guy right here where he tweeted at me, hey, Trace, can you give the Saints a list of reasons to re-sign Paulson Adebo? So rather than just giving you a couple of reasons on Twitter, figured I'd make that the theme of today's video. So before we dive into my thoughts as to why I believe the Saints should bring back Paulson Adebo in 2025, I want to hear from you. Would you re-sign and pay that man? next off season just give me a simple yes or a simple no in the comment section i can't wait to see what you have to say so basically in today's video like i said we're going to be breaking down why i believe that the new orleans saints cannot lose their cornerback Paulson Adebo in 2025 free agency. Now, this is going to be a contract year for number 29. I expect a lot of really good production from him because his stock has just been rising every single season. And we're going to go through a handful of more reasons why I think the Saints need to pay that man. But it is worth noting, per over the cap, New Orleans is about $86 million over the cap in 2025. That's the numbers right this second on Monday, June 3rd in the afternoon. So I do think that it's worth noting that you do have to clear up some money next year. There has to be a way to get under the cap when you're about $86 million over that number right now. And I will address also the elephant in the room here the New Orleans Saints did trade up to draft Kool-Aid McKinstry this past season. They went from 45 to the 41st overall selection to take Kool-Aid McKinstry. And I think that that is a telling sign, whether it's they're going to move off of Marshawn Lattimore, or maybe it's they don't believe that they're going to bring back Paulson Adebo, or maybe it's, hey, we just want to have a super deep group within the Saints depth chart. So that's just kind of a few things worth noting. There's a lot of money that they have to create next offseason, and obviously there is Kool-Aid McKinstry waiting in the rafters. But why should the Saints keep Paulson Adebo? The first reason out of, you know, truly a million different reasons, but I'm narrowing it down to these four. He's a multi-dimensional leader, and what I mean by that is not only is he a leader in terms of stat production, but he's also a leader on the field. And on top of that, when you take a look at the group in the cornerbacks for the black and gold, Paulson Adebo is one of those guys who not only is a perfect blend of talent and age, but also in terms of leadership ability. Now, Marshawn Lattimore, there's no doubt about it. He is the greatest cornerback in Saints history. There is no argument. You could try and convince me otherwise, but I'm going to just tell you you're wrong. Now, Kool-Aid McKinstry, like I said, he's on the step chart, and he has the ability to be a playmaker this year in his rookie season, but I don't think we're going to see a ton from him this year as compared to future seasons that we'll see McKinstry take over because uh, Paulson Adebo, he is the starting cornerback. Marshawn Lattimore is starting opposite of him as long as he's healthy, but just in case there is the health issues, Marshawn Lattimore's missed 17 games over the last two seasons, so... Paulson Adebo starting opposite of Kool-Aid McKinstry I think is a realistic possibility. Also on top of that, Elante Taylor can play on the outside, and I think he actually is a little bit better on the outside as well. But worth noting some chat stats for you. It's not like there's all this, oh my gosh, he's really, really good. He has an impact, and, he, the, and the team rallies around him, and he's a player that everyone respects. Well, he's a leader statistically for the black and gold. He was tied for... The leader in interceptions for the Saints in 2023 with four interceptions. I believe it was with, tied with Tyron Matthew. And he also leads the team since 2021 in joining the team in 33 pass breakups, which is absolutely astonishing, if you ask me. And Tom Blair of the NFL.com, he recently put out an article that was suggesting, you know, the most underrated and underappreciated player on every NFL team. And Paul Adebo was tom blair's option for the saints and he said whether or not Carr and the offense can fully cohere after an up and down 2023 is still uncertain but paulson adebo is one or is one of a handful of young standouts alongside carl graderson brian brzee alante taylor and so many more who can help keep new orleans competitive on defense while Carr and company try to take a step forward now why else should you keep paulson adebo He's a PBU machine. This guy is addicted to breaking up passes. I mean, 
He has so many pass breakups. He has so many breakups. You'd think that there'd be a Taylor Swift song written about him. I mean, look at the production just in 2023. He only played in 15 games, which only played 15 games. He missed two, but he had insane statistical production. 18 pass breakups last year is incredible. Four interceptions, damn good. He had two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, 76 total tackles on the season. Paulson Adebo was damn good in 2023. And also, did you know that the pass breakups that he had in all 18 of those was number three in the NFL in pass breakups across the entire league? So do what you want with that information. Maybe some of you are sitting at home saying, Marshawn Lattimore is so much better. I don't want to keep, I'd rather keep Lattimore over Adebo. And I could be convinced of that argument, and I'm not really sure which side of the fence I land on. But if I had to pick between the two, I kind of like the younger option that's already a leader rather than a guy who's missed an entire season's worth of games in the last two years. I, that's not me saying I want Marshawn Lattimore gone. That's more so me saying Paul Sinadibo is him. He is a damn good football player, and he deserves so much credit, not just from big media and the rest of the NFL world, but us as Saints fans as well. I truly do believe number 29 is a special player, and he is severely underappreciated. So if you agree with me and you think that Paul Sinadibo is underrated, type his jersey number 29 down in the comments because he just deserves so much more credit. I love Paul Sandia, but I think he's a damn good football player, so I want to see him get his love. Now, reason number three why I would keep Paul Sandia, he's a quarterback's worst nightmare, guys. At the end of the day, when Marshawn Lattimore was missing time, Paul Sandia answered the call. He stepped up and made things happen, and in week nine, he started opposite of Marshawn Lattimore. And look at the freaking production there. I mean, this guy was a walking highlight reel against the Chicago Bears. Seven tackles, two interceptions, three pass breakups, one forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Paul Sinadibo in week nine took over. He made the New Orleans Saints win that football game. Obviously, there was great production elsewhere, but Paul Sinadibo is the reason that the Saints were as successful as they were in week nine. And in 2023, on top of that, he had the 10th best passer rating allowed in the entire NFL. Less than 60 overall passer rating allowed. What more do you want from this kid? I mean, he is so talented. He is aggressive in terms of breaking up passes. He's lethal at the point of catch, which is why he has four interceptions last year. And he had three his rookie season. This is a really good football player, and the New Orleans Saints should not let him leave in free agency. And I have a lot more to say here in just a second. But Father's Day is just around the corner, and I know some of you at home are sitting here being like, oh, shit, you're right, Trace. Uh, Father's Day is coming up pretty quick. I totally forgot to get my dad a gift. Well, if you want to get your dad some Saints gear, you can get him a shirt that says, number one dad. Go to chatsports.com slash saintsdad. The link is in the comment section and description of this video. It's coming from Fanatics, so it's going to be nice quality stuff. So go get yourself, or not yourself, go get your dad something new for Father's Day and be the son of the year by getting him this shirt. All right, and why I should keep, or why I think the Saints should keep Paulson Adebo, my biggest reason, he's only getting better. Every year, it feels like he has improved. And I want to flash the stats that he's put up every season so in 2021 he had 66 tackles damn good as a rookie 2022 really good production again 60 tackles but then in 2023 he maximized and got the best of his season in 76 and the pass breakups 8 to 7 to 18 and that is in four less games with one last pass breakup i believe in 2022 he could have had double digit pbus and who's to say he couldn't have logged an interception as well? Obviously, three interceptions to zero to four, like, it's up then down then way back up. But this is a player who's so, so good. And I think that he deserves a spot on the Saints payroll that is very, very large. Again, you're not going to get high-end cornerback talent like this in terms of the depth for the New Orleans Saints where you have Marshawn Lattimore, you have Paulson Adebo, you have Alante Taylor, and then you can also throw Kool-Aid McKinstry into the mix. You're not going to get that kind of luxury anytime soon, and it, that only happens 
honestly, once in it feels like a lifetime. And on, like, do we have to hop in the time machine real quick? Do I need to remind you about Trey Hendrickson? Do I need to remind you about what happened a few years ago when the Saints let him walk in free agency? They refused to pay the man. And then now he's one of the best sack artists in the league, one of the best edge rushers in the NFL, and he is lighting it up for Cincinnati. And every single day, I wish we could have just a half of the production Trey Hendrickson has in terms of the sacks because he's so damn good, and that alone would boost this Saints defense tremendously. Now, he is going to expect a large payday, I do believe, and when you take a look at the highest paid corners in the NFL, you already have one of the top 10 highest paid guys. He's actually in the top five. Marshawn Lattimore is making $19.4 million, which is tied for fifth in the entire NFL. Are you going to be able to afford two guys that are making top 10 money? In the NFL? I don't think so. I, th I think that is an honest conversation you have to have with yourself if you're the front office of the New Orleans Saints. Because I don't think that Paulson Adebo is going to be asking for less than $16, $17 million. I mean, there's a big gap between Jalen Johnson and Carlton Davis, but I mean, honestly, I think that Paulson Adebo is going to command a lot of money. And you have to figure out what you're doing with this cornerback group. At the end of the day, not just this season, but in the future. Are you going to invest and keep Marshawn Lattimore past this season? Are you going to allow Paulson Adebo to leave in free agency, cash in big time, and go make plays elsewhere? Or are you going to do the right thing and keep a player who's a, who has the ability to be a cornerstone player and has the potential to be one of the top players at their respective positions in the entire league? I truly do believe Paulson Adebo could be amongst the top corners if given the opportunity. And he has been given a lot of opportunity, and he has performed damn well. And there's a lot of issues, and there's a lot of talent, and a lot of depth in the Saints cornerback room, and that's a phenomenal problem. Dennis Allen is a smart defensive coach. you got to give him that credit. So I think that the Saints are going to figure it out, and I think that they're going to do some interesting things. I'm not going to say smart because we have to see it to believe it, but I like where the Saints' position is in, where you have all the cards in your plate or on your, uh, in your hand, you just have to deal them out. So I really like what the Saints have going on. But I just wanted to ask kind of off-the-wall question here. Who's your favorite defensive player of all time for the New Orleans Saints? I mean, I, I got to go with my guy Jonathan Vilma. I mean, he was one of the first players that I absolutely fell in love with as a Saints fan. I'm young enough to remember when he was absolutely dominating in the NFL. So I want you to shout out your favorite defensive player of all time for the black and gold in the comment section. And thanks so much for tuning in. Y'all stay golden. We'll see you next time.